Hello, I'm Brad Phillips and welcome to Puppy Steps Training. We're very excited for you to be bringing home your new puppy. We've created this video so that we can demonstrate all of the training your puppy has received. We also want to go over how to troubleshoot it and how to make sure that you continue with the training so that you can have a lifetime of success with your puppy. Uh, before we get into that portion of the video, we need to cover some very important parts of, of the training program. And that's really just to cover what your expectations are and to cover our three secrets to success, if you will. Uh, so first, our expectations. We have very high expectations for your puppy, and you should too. But remember, they are still a puppy, which means they are gonna make mistakes. Uh, you are not getting a perfect dog. I hope that wasn't your expectation, but if it was, I would suggest that maybe you run to Walmart and get a stuffed animal, because there is no such thing as a perfect dog. They are gonna make mistakes. Uh, and it's important for us to teach them what our expected behaviors are. We gotta teach them that you have high expectations, that you are gonna be their new leader, because right now they see myself and our trainers as uh, leaders. And so we want the same relationship to develop with you. And in order to do that, you have to be consistent, you have to follow through, and you have to manage your dog. So, first one, consistency. Uh, when we talk about consistency, that's both consistently rewarding and correcting. You have to have both. Uh, it's also important that your whole family's consistent across the board with what they expect from your puppy and that we expect our puppies to follow rules. Uh, dogs need structure. They need a pack leader. And so that's where, where you're going to come in. So it's important to use... Um, the same words across the board. So the first one, we have our marker, which is okay. So okay means that your dog, they've done something correctly and that they're finished and some type of reward is gonna follow. So if I asked my dog to hold a down stay, I backed up and then I would say, okay, good dog. And that means they did it correctly and they're released and they can come and get a treat from me um, or you know, they get praised or something like that. They get rewarded is what's important. Right now, your dog's a puppy, and so most likely they are very food motivated. That is a currency that they want to work for, and so we're going to use that to our advantage. And I would suggest using that positive reinforcement at least through the first year of your dog's life. As they gain fluency and they're really, really good and quick with all these commands, then you can definitely start to wean off this food reward. Um, but as your puppy grows and matures and starts to develop a relationship with you, it's important that I would, I would use food and I would earn their trust. And once again, I want our relationship to be built out of respect. And so if you're giving them a currency that they enjoy, you're gonna build that respect much faster. But there are gonna be times where you don't have food on you. And so it's important to still reward your dog. In these cases, I use praise and affection very heavily. Also, if I'm outside and we're playing with a toy, I will use that toy as a reward. Uh, you can use tennis balls or bumpers or anything like that. If your dog really enjoys playing fetch, use that toy as a reward. Go out, ask him to do some basic obedience, and then throw the toy. <coughs> but always follow up with some type of reward. Now, we also use the word good. Good is like a keep going, you're almost there type of a command. I'll say good when they're holding a stay. I can walk up, tell them, good dog, good boy and that's not releasing them, but I'm gonna pet them, maybe give them a treat, and it's just more of a reassurance. Uh, that's also like, especially in a recall command, I'll start to say good as soon as they start to come towards me, because it's like, yes, you're doing the right thing, you're almost done, and then as soon as they get to me, I follow that up with, okay, good dog. So, uh, use those. Now, also, I do believe that there's a balance to all things, so just as I'm gonna consistently reward, I'm gonna consistently correct. Uh, so when I correct a dog, I don't believe that you need to physically dominate your dog. I want our relationship, once again, to be built out of respect. And so my correction a lot of times is simple. If I'm working with a puppy and they break, I'll just simply tell them no, and then I'll have them do that behavior again. So just as important as the actual uh, verbal correction is that reinforcement by having them do the correct behavior. So that's all it needs to be is a simple no. If your dog does do something a little bit more serious, like maybe they start to have an accident, that's when I do get really firm. And so once again, I'm not gonna physically dominate my dog. Instead, if they start to have an accident, I might clap, I might stomp, and I'll say, no, 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 no. And I just get a lot more um, 
a lot more firm in that, teaching them like, no, no, please don't do that. Let's hurry and go outside. Uh, but once again, I'm going to follow through. So if my dog starts to have an accident and I correct him that way, I'm going to quickly grab them. I'm going to take them outside, give them the opportunity to finish going to the bathroom outside. And then I'm going to bury that frustration deep down and I'm going to reward that puppy for doing that correct behavior. So that way we create a black and white experience. It's no, don't do that here. Yes, good job. This is where I want you to do it. That's a correct behavior. Uh, we do have one type of physical correction, and that's just a simple leash correction. I'm not trying to yank them around because at this stage, one, I don't want to apply a lot of pressure. I want to first teach a behavior before I implement that pressure. Uh, so this leash correction is more to regain their attention to then change their behavior, which the nice thing about leash pressure is then it easily transforms into using a prong collar or using uh, other forms of pressure to teach your dog higher levels of obedience. But once again, first, before I start implementing too much pressure, I want to make sure that they understand what my expectations are. So remember, this is a balanced dog training program, which means you have to have both. You need that positive reinforcement so you can teach, but you have to have that correction so you can establish uh, what your expectations are. Uh, so then our second, uh, our second point is that follow through. It directly correlates to the to being consistent. If you correct your dog and they ignore you, you have to follow through. You can't just say no and then let your dog get away with performing an incorrect behavior. So one of these that I see all the time is a recall command. So if I call my dog to come and they ignore me, I am going to get my dog. Now I'm gonna calmly go and get them. I'm not, never gonna chase after my dog. Uh, the other thing is when my dog does finally come, I'm not gonna reprimand them. I want to be calm, but I want to teach them what the expected behavior is. Um, so I will only say a command once. I expect them to follow through. If they don't, I follow up with a correction. So I'd say no, and then I'm going to enforce the behavior. So in the situation, if I called my dog to come and they ignored me, I'm going to go and get them. The tricky thing, or not the tricky thing, but the important thing is say I did call them to come and they failed and I got 90% of the way there and then my dog was like, oh hey, what are you doing? And came running over to me. I will reward that behavior because I don't want to reprimand my dog for coming to me. I'm not gonna get frustrated and get mad at my dog for coming to me because there's a chance that they were just uh, so hyper-focused on whatever was going on that they didn't register that you called them. Uh, now there are times where a dog might blatantly push the buttons so another good example is jumping on a couch. So we have the command off. If one of my puppies came and hopped on this couch and I said off and they looked at me like, oh, what are you gonna do about it? At that point, I mark that behavior. I say no and I go over and remove that puppy. So I am teaching them that that is not acceptable. This is what is acceptable. So you have to follow through because if you repeat yourself, if you just sit there and you're like, no, Fluffy, off, off, Fluffy, Fluffy, get off your dog's not registering that as a correction. They just think you're, you're barking just like they bark. So instead, the moment that they choose not to obey, I mark that behavior with that correction and then I reinforce. It's important to remember that what you reinforce will get replicated. So reinforce good behaviors. If your dog is in control, they're sitting next to you just hanging out, I'll pet them, I'll praise them, that's what I want. I want to reinforce that behavior. Um, so catch them doing good things. But same thing, if your dog starts to pull, immediately correct that behavior. Uh, teach them what your expected behavior is. So be consistent, follow through, and manage your dog. So management is gonna be one of the most important things you do, especially over this transition period. So that breaks down to just maintaining control. If you have control of your dog, they're not allowed to create bad habits because they're not allowed to to get away with doing an incorrect behavior. So uh, there's a couple tools that I always recommend using. So first is the crate. The crate is your biggest asset because as you bring a puppy home, you need to maintain 100% supervision. You need to know where your puppy is at all times, what they're doing at that moment. And so there's gonna be times where you cannot do that. You need to focus on your kids or you need to focus on making dinner or you need to go take a shower. Like in those situations, put your puppy in the crate. That way they're, they're under control because they're contained. They're not allowed to go and sneak, her off, sneak around the corner and have an accident or go and chew something up. Uh, 
maintain that control. The other thing, baby gates. If you don't want them in a super room, or a, sorry, in a specific room, block it off, close doors. Don't allow access. Remember that freedom is earned. It is not a right in your home. As you bring your puppy home, they earn that freedom. Uh, so the other thing is keep a leash attached, especially early on, let them drag a leash around. That way you have a quick way to correct them, a quick way to get them outside if you need to. But just understand that it has to be uh, supervised. Like you, you can't just let your dog off in a room, especially if they have a leash attached because you don't want them getting tangled around something. Whereas if I'm supervising them, giving them that strict supervision, uh, I'm gonna know what they're getting into or where they're at. And so I can immediately correct a behavior, I can immediately reward a behavior. Uh, we will touch on management throughout this video because it is so intertwined with everything we do. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, once again, if, if you're seeing this video, that means your puppy is finished and they've reached our standards and I think you're gonna have great success. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call. We wanna make sure that this transition is as seamless as possible. So thanks again, we appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed your experience with Puppy Steps training. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the demonstration portion of this video. As you can see, I have Willie in the crate with me. Uh, he is a super good dog. I'm excited to show you all of this. Uh, but real quick, I wanna tell you how this is gonna go. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit different than the other demonstrations that I have recorded that maybe you've watched. Uh, and that's just because I'm gonna come down and spend some time with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so the purpose of this demonstration is just to show you his standard, show you what I expect as he settles in and where we're in a familiar and comfortable environment. So understanding that Willie's a little bit of a headstrong dog uh, is gonna be important. And that's why I spent the time to talk to you about consistency, management, and follow-through. Those are so important. Willie never gets to end on failure. We always end on a success and I just have very high expectations for him. And so I want you to have those same expectations and I want, to, I want you to see what they are. So we're gonna hop into the manners. Uh, I'm gonna let Willie out of the crate here, hook a leash on him. Now, the first manner is his gates and doorways. Anytime he comes through the crate, he goes through a door or a gate, anything that has that threshold, I expect him to hold an automatic stay. He doesn't have to sit or lay down. He can be standing, but he's not allowed to cross the threshold until uh, released. Now, once again, this is an automatic behavior, so I'm gonna, I am not going to tell him anything. Instead, when I open that, I just expect him to do it. Now, if he did try and break, I might simply close the door or lift up my leg and block him. If he was really persistent on going through, then I would tell him no but I'm never gonna actually ask him to stay. Okay, good boy, good boy. Now he's gonna come over and present his greeting, which is that, which his greeting is just him sitting in front of me. This shows that he's in control and now he's ready for further instruction. By presenting this greeting, I get his eye contact, so I know that I have his focus. Also, you can see that he's planted, he's not gonna be jumping. So I expect this greeting every time I see Willie when I've been gone for a little bit, uh, or he's coming out of the crate, or maybe when he's super excited and he has a zoomies. You don't have to expect him to do this every single time he comes up to you, uh, or if you're on a walk. Like I do expect him to do this though for every new person and every time I've been away from him for a while, uh, which I'll work with you uh, to implement this. Why he's transitioning, he's not gonna present this to every stranger because he's under some stress. And so during those times, I need to be an advocate for my dog and I need to help him succeed. Once again, I always train to success, not to failure. So once again, I can just, Willie, come here. Anytime I call him over, he sits, good boy, then I'll give him some attention. I also expect him to be planted when I'm removing or putting on this leash or a vest, anything like that. He's not allowed to get up until I tell him, he's, uh, tell him that he's released. Good boy. Now, meal times. Anytime I feed Willie, all I gotta do is shake that bowl and then he's gonna sit down. This is another automatic behavior. Ah, 
So if he breaks, let's lift it up above him and set it down. You can see that my simple correction uh, just ah ah and he sat back down. Okay, good boy, good boy. You'll also notice he's looking to me for permission. Ah, good boy, good boy. I can take away his food, I can hand feed him. Um, but this is all just developing this relationship that he trusts me as the leader. I supply the food, I supply protection, and I take care of him. Good boy. I'm not gonna let him eat a whole bunch of food because I want him motivated throughout this demo. Ah, good boy. Good boy. Um, with hand feeding and any of that, so we've taught him the command gently. I want him to be very aware of his teeth and very cautious. I don't want him uh, jumping up, trying to steal food out of my hand or biting me. I want zero teeth. So he's getting a drink here. And then I'll show you. Willie. So I can tell him gently and I expect him to be very cautious when taking a treat. Now, I always give it to him in the palm of my hand and I actually tuck it underneath my thumb, if you can see that. That's just, <laughs> so uh, he can't get it unless he's in control outside. So we're gonna take him out to the bathroom now. Okay. Outside. Nope. Okay. So I will go over the house training in detail in just a little bit. So going back to that so I can tell him gently gently and i expect him to be very cautious uh, most of the time i don't give him a treat between my thumb and forefinger but we practice that because kids never remember gently good boy and he should be very cautious this also goes for if he's taking something like a bully stick or a toy i don't want him to rear up so i can present it slowly huh? gently good boy i want him to be very cautious i want him to understand that he's not allowed to jump up and grab my fingers um, so we spend a lot of time working on drop it and with willie we've developed it multiple ways so one when i have a toy and i'm playing with him i expect him to bring it all the way to me and bring it to my hand so willie likes to chase the ball around and bat it around and that's fine, but I'll tell him, come here, and then he brings it over and I'll ask him to drop it uh, into my hand. Now, I don't know if you can see him on the camera. I'll bring him back, come here. With something like a bully stick, come here. I can also take it and I just ask him, gent or sorry, drop it. Almost said gently, huh, good boy. And he should just physically release that. Yeah. So if he's doing this, I'm not gonna let him have it. Good, there we go, good boy, good boy. Huh. So he's gonna take it over to his bed, which at this, I can ask him to drop it from a distance and I expect him to spit it out and look at me. Sometimes when I'm working on this, especially where he has a boy stick, I'll just immediately give it back to him. So that way he doesn't think of this command as me always taking stuff away from him. It should be a very positive experience. Willie, drop it. Good boy. So you'll notice it took him a second to spit it out. Uh, so that's why I didn't immediately correct him. If he went back to chewing on it, then I would tell him no, and I'd go and remove it. So even with him chewing on it like this, drop it. No. And I'll take it away which you can see he doesn't fight me on it, but he knows that he's supposed to immediately just let go of it. I'm fine if it takes him a second to work it out of his mouth, but he's not allowed to continue to chew. Now, if I'm gonna take it away, then I'll replace it. So I'll give him a treat uh, for freely giving up that bully stick. Willie, drop it. 
Good boy. Good boy. You can see he spit it out. I gave him a treat and then can take it away. Now we'll pull out his toy and see if he'll play fetch with me. Once I start giving him treats, and this is the same with any dog, a lot of times they'll lose interest in the toy because they want the food. Come here. Good boy. So like I said, I play fetch with Willie a lot. Oop. Make sure he's not going to knock over my mirror. Come here. But I expect him to bring the toy all the way back. Drop it. Good boy. And he'll just let me have it. Good boy. Oh. And he blocked it. Willie. Good boy. Drop it. Good dog. Good boy. Come here. Drop it. Good boy. Good boy. If he ever held on to something and wasn't going to let go of it, I would just grab his muzzle and you just wrap those lips around those canines. Good dog. Good boy. Now, also, we spent a great deal of time handling Willie. So, baths, grooming, putting his hair in ponytails, handling his ears, his mouth. He's very comfortable, which doing the service prep, we've extended that to other people handling him, just making sure that he's not going to become reactive, uh, especially when you handle sensitive areas like paws, tails, mouths, all that. Good boy, which Willie does great. Also, along that lines is grooming. Oh, we got a. So we've got him used to trimmers, to blow dryers, brushes of different kinds. Come here. All sorts of stuff. So he's very comfortable with being groomed because he is going to be a high maintenance dog that way. He gets lots of baths, not always with soap, but he likes to find the mud. Good boy. But you can see he doesn't bite me at all. Ah, da -da -da -da. Good boy. So our big manners are jumping and chewing. So we've spent a ton of time on jumping. Haven't had any issues with Willie. He's done really well. If he does try and jump, whether this is on the furniture or up on somebody, the command is off. So I'll tell him off and I expect him to get right down. Doesn't matter once again what he's jumping on. If he was running at me and I thought hmm, he might jump on me, I never want to step backwards. As soon as you step back, you're basically encouraging him to come and jump on you. Instead, I'll always step into him. That way I'm restricting the space. I'm showing him that, hey, I'm the boss. You're not allowed to jump on me. And if he did try and jump, I'm going to bring my knee up catch him in the chest and block him. So he is never allowed with jumping up on somebody. No pause whatsoever if, if it was not asked for. Because we have taught him the high five and so he'll put his hands up on my hands, but he's not allowed to put his paws on my legs. Or if I don't ask him for that high five, he's not allowed to put his paws up. So if he does, I tell him no, off. Um, we've kind of talked about the follow through on this. If he jumps up on something like across the room and you tell him off and he doesn't immediately get down, you have to go and remove him. So also for the first little while while he's greeting new people, keep him on a leash. Now uh, chewing. So chewing is a big one. Willie, I doubt you can see it from there. I'll show you when I come down. So he has lost like all of his teeth on the bottom and none of them have come in yet. So that's, uh, that's fun. Also, he's about ready to lose these canines. Uh, so chewing is gonna be big. He needs to chew. You have to give him things to chew on. So that's why I provide him toys and bully sticks and just things of different texture. I'll let him choose whether he wants a soft toy or a hard one. Um, but I make sure that I rotate that. And if I see him chewing on something he's not supposed to, I tell him no, and then I replace it with something he is allowed to. That's how we teach him what what's his and what's ours. He is never allowed to chew on shoes uh, or furniture, anything like that. And that is, if he picks something up like a sock, that's when I'll use drop it and then replace it. But if he's chewing on something like furniture, uh, you never want to use leave it or drop it. At that point, I just tell him no and I give him something to chew on. Uh, also try and, and match the texture of what, or 
consistency of what he's chewing on. Whether that's a table leg, I'll give him a bully stick. He wants to chew on a pillow or a soft bed, I give him a plush toy. Meet those needs because he's chewing based on what he feels like his mouth needs. So, um, With that, I believe that's our manners. So now we'll hop into our commands. Um, so yeah, just making sure I covered everything. Willie, drop it. Good boy, good boy. Okay, so commands. We have three hand signals. The first one is sit, is just a scoop over his nose. Down, I'll take my hand flat and I'll take him down. And then stay is a stop sign. Good boy. Now, we've been working on making these quicker. Sometimes Willie, especially when we were learning the down, he would look at me and then he would look away. Like, oh, if I'm not looking at you, I don't have to listen. So it's important that you expect him to do it. Give him a second to think about it. But if he's being resilient uh, or resistant, I should say, I will use leash pressure. So I'm going to pull him out. So sit down. So I'll take my hand flat. Good. Stay. Now we've been adding a lot of distractions with his stays. He has really, really good stays, but don't be satisfied with them. Always try and improve. Um, so right now he's well, well above 30 to 45 seconds. I've been getting minute stays with pretty, um, probably intermediate distractions. With heavy distractions, he's well above 30 seconds. Um, me talking over the top is actually a pretty good distraction because sometimes dogs think that we forget about them if we're not paying attention to them. When I'm increasing these and I'm getting longer duration, sometimes I'll just go over and I'll give him a treat and tell him, good dog. And that just basically means you're doing the right thing, keep going. Okay, good dog, good boy. So fairly simple distractions. Um, but I was just walking around him, trying to act like I'd forgotten about him. Uh, I'll show you some heavier distractions when I come down. Come here. Sit. Stay. Now we have both a sit and a down stay. Uh, if he slumps down into a down, I'm fine with that. However, he's not allowed to pop, pop up. Uh, or if I put him in a down stay, he's never allowed to come up even to a sit. So I'm going to walk over here. Add some distraction. Okay, good boy. So the running has been a big one because when I first started taking him to our basketball games, uh, kids running by was a big distraction, uh, but he's been doing phenomenal with those. Oh, good boy. Good boy. So our other commands is I'll tell him crate. Now, all I have to do is point. I always want to orient my body language to help him succeed. Um, the same thing, he's expected to stay and he's not allowed to come out until released. Okay, good boy. Willie. Crate, we've been working on distance so that you can send him from other rooms further away, but that's something you're gonna have to work towards. You'll notice when I do it from distance here. Okay, good boy. Willie, crate is I step and point. Huh? Just like that. Now the crate command is one that you're gonna wanna practice a lot because if you only use it when you're gonna lock him up, he's gonna figure that out. So mix it up, keep it variable, keep it fun. Okay, good boy. So very similar is the place command. So I'm just gonna slide further. Willie, yeah. so we're gonna guess. Come here, place. So place, I don't, I don't care what position he's in, but all four paws have to be on that object. Um, and usually we use this with something that has a defined barrier. So we've worked on the blanket, we've worked on rugs, 
we've worked on obviously the raised beds anything like that so his place stays have been a couple minutes pretty easy now if he's standing like this I'm gonna keep a, a pretty steady eye on him but I expect him to settle into it and when I'm building this one up same thing as I get up you know every 45 seconds or so I'll come over and I'll tell him good boy and I'll give him a treat we've been working on leaving the room making sure that we're clear out of sight we'll put him on the place we'll go to the bathroom um, as you've seen in the notes my dogs are a very heavy distraction so we use those a lot um, also a toy he loves his toys so we'll even use that as a distraction good to where he's holding that I'll tell him good boy You'll also notice I'm going to bring you one of these balls. They're his absolute favorite. Um, and I think he loves them so much because when you throw them or roll them, they go crazy all over the place. Once again, you can see where he's not quite settled um, or where he stood up because of that toy. I'm kind of keeping an eye on him, but he is not allowed to come across that, uh, that barrier, that threshold. Okay, good boy place so at uh, you can see if he's focused on where the treat is I'll just tell him just a simple correction just that ah uh. so now you won't be able to see it on camera but I'm gonna walk outside uh, leave for a second come back maybe knock we'll see if he'll uh, how he'll do on that I would like to see him settle before I left the room, but we're just going to go for it. Good boy, who's a good boy? That's a good dog. Good boy, good boy. Okay, good dog, good boy. All right, so our last command is leave it, or the last one in this section, I should say. Now, leave it means leave it permanently. Once I tell him to leave something, uh, it is forever forbidden. So we only use leave it for things that I can take Willie away from or I can take away from Willie. That's why we never use fixed objects. Now we've been practicing this command with a lot of um, very smelly foods, especially ones that he's going to be around. So like popcorn, uh, stuff like that. We'll also spill the garbage and you leave it. I just want to make sure that when I tell him leave it, he's going to walk away and not try and pull back towards whatever it is. So in this bowl, I got some hot dogs, um, which I'm going to use these hot dogs as the high value reward. So I've been letting him eat treats off the ground. Now I'm gonna drop some treats and ask him to leave it. Now when I'm practicing with food, especially something that he's been allowed to eat in the past, uh, I'm gonna take a hold of the leash. That way I have some control. Now I'm gonna, I wanna make sure that he sees these. So I'm gonna drop them, put them in a pile. And now good boy, leave it. Good dog, so you'll notice that he just he kind of took a, a wide berth around it, but he is not allowed to go and eat those. Good boy, good boy. Now, as we're doing this, I'm giving him these hot dogs. Like I said, high value reward. You'll notice that he's basically ignoring now what we've left at. So especially early on at the baseball stadium, if there's gonna be things like this, like I said, popcorn, anything like that, that you don't want him picking up off the ground, I would suggest having some very high value rewards. Uh, hot dogs, I mean, in the sun, you really don't want a bag full of hot dogs. But if you um, can find something like a meaty treat, like jerky, something like that, uh, my dogs love. 
So that way, when you come across something like this, you have a way to use this high value reward and you're, you're teaching him that, hey, if you listen to me, especially something that's as desirable as this, something even better is gonna come. Willie, good dog. If he did kind of go for it a little bit, come here, then this is the one command where I might repeat. I'll just say, leave it. Good boy, okay, good dog. Just like that. Okay, and I am going to cover the commands watch me and come when we go outside and we're gonna do his leash work. But before that, I'm gonna let Willie just hang out. I'll give him a bully stick and we're gonna talk about his crate training and house training. So crate training, we've spent a ton of time just making sure that he's comfortable in the crate. He's not gonna have accidents, nor is he gonna be vocal. So the one thing with Willie is he's a sheepdog. They are very good at guarding. Um, Willie, every once in a while, will alert when someone new comes through the door, which we've just been telling him thank you to that. If he barks once, if he barks twice, then it's a hush. So other than that, other than alerting when new people come in, he's been just silent in the crate. He sleeps through the night, he's doing eight to 10 hours, no problem. He's doing four hour blocks during the day with ease. But with the crate training, I also like to keep that variable because dogs do very well with routines, but if you always have the same routine, like you're gone from one to four, um, at four, his internal alarm goes off and he's like, okay, it's time to be let out. So even if you have that type of routine, it's important that when you come home at four, you know, sometimes I'll go to the bathroom or sometimes I'll get a drink. Sometimes I'll let him out immediately. Sometimes he's got to stay in there for an extra 15 minutes. That way he doesn't become dependent that as soon as you get home, he needs let out. Because the other thing that might happen is if you're late, you get home at like 4.30 instead of four, and for the last 30 minutes, your dog's been barking because he's so used to being let out at this exact time. So keep it variable. Also crate him when you're home as well as when you're gone. That way he doesn't associate um, being crated with being abandoned because that's something that a lot of people do is they only put their dog in the crate when they're leaving, and so that, that association attaches itself, and then you get a dog that maybe cries when you leave or gets separation anxiety. So keep it variable with when you're home, when you're gone, amounts of times, things like that. The first night, it's not a bad idea to give him a break in the, in the crate. So at like 2 a.m., I'll set an alarm, take him out just to go to the bathroom, then put him back. And that's just because he's gonna be a little stressed out with, uh, with the transition. Uh, once again, if he starts whining, I tell him hush. The biggest mistake you can make with the crate is consoling your dog because once again he's going to be stressed out the first two weeks that he's transitioning and so also with a dog like willie that's maybe a little bit headstrong sometimes they try and push the boundaries and see what you're going to get away with or what you're going to let them get away with so the first time you put him in the crate he might start to make a little bit of noise he might protest being in there if you go over and you say, oh, it's okay, Willie, I'll let you out in a little while, and you put your fingers in there, uh, that's consoling him, and that's just gonna cause him to cry even more. The absolute worst thing you could do is go over and actually let him out when he's crying. Instead, I'll tell him, hush, I expect him to settle down. Now, if you were going to let him out, maybe you came in the room, he sees you and starts barking, I will tell him, hush, and I'm gonna wait until he is quiet before I open that door. He never gets to come out of the crate if he is making noise. So, which Willie, he's great with. Uh, the only time in the past month that he's made any noise uh, was when I took him home for the night and I put him in there and we did some isolated crate training. So a whole new environment by himself in an unknown room and he started crying for the first couple minutes and then he calmed down. But that's been uh, almost a month ago. So. He's awesome in the crate, no worries there. Uh, but the crate is your biggest asset, use it, right? This is how we properly manage a dog. If you can't keep eyes on Willie, he goes in a crate. Until you are 100% confident in him that he is not gonna have an accident or chew something up, he goes in the crate, okay? Containment, containment, containment. Uh, that's how you prevent accidents from happening which with his house training, so Willie has been doing awesome. You've already seen him ring the bell once here. 
um, we've been giving him full access but as you take him home you need to keep very strict supervision on him he does not have full access to your house every dog is different and understand that freedom is earned it is not just a right just because he's went through all this training does not give him the right to have full access to your house or your apartment he is strictly supervised and for the first a couple weeks you are going to take him to the bells and take him outside frequently this way we stay ahead of his schedule and we don't give him the opportunity to have an accident so i am going to demonstrate how to do the bells when we come down to your house uh, but understand this is the routine so the, for the first 24 hours if willie is outside of the crate he is going to the bells ringing them and given the opportunity to go to the bathroom every 30 minutes uh, after that first 24 hours, then for the next 24 hours, you take him every 45 minutes. Then on day three, you take him every hour. When I hit day three, I am no longer gonna give him a treat for ringing the bells. He only gets a treat when he actually goes to the bathroom. Uh, after, after that, so you're at day three, for the next three to four days, keep him at an hour. He's gonna be stressed out. One of the side effects to stress in a dog is they go to the bathroom more frequently and they may get a loose stool. So that's a big reason we stay at an hour, let him come back to normal. And then for the next week, you will build him up to two hours. So I know Willie can go longer than that, but for the next month, you do not let him go longer than two hours without getting a break inside your home. This is just some preventative maintenance. As a dog trainer, I would rather be paranoid and take him out five extra times than clean up an accident. So give him plenty of opportunities. We walk over, he rings the bells, we go outside. The one thing with Willie, which we've really been working on, is Willie is really good at ringing the bells, but then he wants to go to the bathroom really quick. So we'll get outside, he'll immediately hit the grass, and he starts to pee. So we've been working on giving us a little bit more time getting further outside before he starts to pee. So just a little side note there. Um, Look for signs that he may need to go to the bathroom. If he starts sniffing really heavily, he's panting, he's pacing, those are indicators. If your gut says maybe he needs to go, it's, it's most likely right, so just take him out. If you think that he needs to poop, give him a couple, ex, like an extra minute outside. We're outside no longer than two minutes. He goes really quick, but sometimes he takes just an extra minute to find where he wants to poop. So give him that opportunities, which once again, I'm gonna cover this when I come down to you. Uh, now, hopefully he won't ever have an accident, but regression is normal when they're under a stressful situation, so like this transition. But regressing means that we're gonna do our hardest, we're gonna keep him on a schedule, we're gonna give him plenty of opportunities. Regression doesn't mean accidents. It means that we need to try harder, we need to be on top of this schedule. If Willie does have an accident, if he is out of your view and he has an accident, that's your fault. That's not his. 100% um, supervision is a must. So if you stumble across an accident after it happens, slap yourself on the wrist, try harder. If he's gonna have an accident, I want it to be right in front of me. And that is the scariest I get. I'll stomp, I'll clap my hands, I'll no, 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 no. Yeah, good boy. And then I will rush him outside, okay? You're not gonna kick him outside and then go and clean up the accident. No, you go with him, you take him outside and give him the opportunity to finish. If he finishes, then I bury that frustration deep down and I say, yes, good boy, okay, good outside. And I mark that behavior. So that way you're creating a black and white experience. He sees, oh, I just got corrected for peeing here, but then I was rewarded for peeing there. So that way you teach him what your expected, your expected behavior is. Huh, good boy. Now, if he rings the bells and you take him outside and he doesn't go, just bring him back in. It's a neutral experience. He doesn't get rewarded nor corrected. So, um, once again, we'll cover this in some detail when I come down there. But right now, uh, I'm going to grab a jacket and we're going to go outside and we'll do his, um, his walks. We'll do both his long lead and his attention walk. We'll also show you unloading and loading into a car and recall, watch me and engagement. So with that, we'll go outside. 
So our attention walk is a basic heel, is what it is. I expect him to be by my side with a loose leash, and he is not pulling. So our commands, I'll tell him let's go, just signifying that we're moving, uh, no or easy if he starts to pull. Uh, my expectation is if I'm stopped, he's planted. And then once I tell him let's go, we're free to move again. So when I come to a stop, I expect him to sit. I also, once again, expect him not to pull. Uh, we have been implementing leash pressure, um, which I'll show you. Also, if he does start to pull and I tell him easy and he doesn't immediately stop, I'll pop him twice on that leash. That's our leash. Good boy, huh? Good boy. If he continued to pull, then I'm going to switch directions and I'm going to quicken my pace. He is expected to match my pace and to focus on me. Now, for his age, he has a phenomenal heel. Um, but also understand that him just focused on me only lasts for a certain amount of time. You're not going to get this super strict heel for an hour. Like it's not possible for his attention span. So we do it in short bursts. Sometimes he gets more of a loose leash walk where he has the extent. He's able to kind of sniff, but he's still not allowed to pull. And then we can switch to our attention walk where it's focused. He's healing. We're ignoring distractions. We also have our long lead walk, which is what I have here, which I'll demonstrate after this attention walk. So when I start, I tell him, let's go. Uh, and you can just watch the way that he responds to me. And then we'll go into a little bit more detail when I come down there. Let's go. Good dog. Let's go. Obviously out here we don't have a lot of distractions near the facility. We've practiced this a lot um, with heavy crowds and in areas where there's a lot more distractions and people, he's awesome. Um, now I can use leash pressure to guide him where I want to go. That way I'm not correcting him if he's not, um, if I just catch him off guard. So a little bit of leash pressure is just a little bit back, maybe to the side, it's just, let's go. So if I'm going to step into him, it can just be a little bit off to the side. Good dog. Or if I'm switching directions, let's go. It's not a, a correction, it's just a little bit of pressure. To relieve the pressure, he's got to listen. Good dog. When I stop, good, good boy, got to come to a set. Now, um, here, come here. The next thing I want to talk about, I just wanted to make sure I got back into range of the mic, um, is engagement. So engagement is super important, especially when there's these heavy distractions and you're in a new environment. So if Willie gets focused on a distraction, like Skylar pulling in here, what I would do is I just, Willie, I'm going to turn him away. I'm going to put my back towards the distraction. Good boy. Okay. And I'm going to get him focused. He's sitting. If he was super distracted, this is when I become annoying. I would almost, hey, watch me. Okay. Good boy. This is where I use the watch me command, which is just getting eye contact. Watch me. Okay. Good boy. Uh, I would also, if it's a heavy distraction, Willie, like Skylar is, okay. Good boy. Good boy. I would jackpot reward him. Okay. Good dog. Good boy. Good boy. Which means he's getting lots of treats. Uh, I'm praising him. I'm petting him. Good boy. I'm becoming more interesting and more exciting than the distraction. Good boy. Now, once again, we've practiced this a lot in different environments to where if I just say his name, Willie, good boy, he'll look up at me and I'll reward him for that. So engage with him anytime there's new distractions. And when new people want to approach him, he needs to engage with you first before other people are allowed to pet him. This is going to save you uh, when it comes to pulling. Because if you let people come and immediately run up to him, he's going to want to pull. Because that's exciting. That's new. That new person is just such a heavy distraction that he's going to want to get to them. So instead, we teach him that the correct behavior when a new person is approaching, that he focuses on me first. And then after he sits for me, he engages, then I'll invite that person to come up and pet him. This has to be your rule. Uh, and if he cannot be focused, if he's just so distracted, like there's 10 children running up, 
I'm gonna tell people that they can either wait until he is in control or I will tell, I will tell people no. Especially early on while you're completing his training, this is critical, um, which he does, he does very, very well with. So now I'm gonna switch over his leashes. We're gonna put on this long lead. So a long lead or an off leash walk is how you raise energy. Just your attention walk or a loose leash walk is not gonna burn uh, Willie's energy off. So until you know that he's gonna come to you every time when called, he's on a long lead. And we practice the recall command frequently when we're on this type of walk, like every minute or two. So what this looks like is just like this. The mic might cut off as I get a little further out. So uh, what I'm gonna do when I call him to come is I'll say, Willie, come! And I'll make myself very uh, enticing. So, come on, let's go. Yeah, come on. Good boy. He's just gonna stay next to me, huh? Willie. So I'll direct him away. Willie, come. Good boy. Okay, good boy. Good boy. Yes, good dog. Which we'll go over this once again when I get down there. Um, you will notice as soon as he starts to come towards me, I'll say, yes, good boy. Something like that. I'm telling him, yeah, you're doing the right thing. But I won't mark the behavior until he gets to me. So that's when I'll say, okay, is when he actually gets to me. Willie, come. Good boy. If he hesitates or tries to ignore me, I will reel him in. That's why I have this long lead. Once you know that he's gonna come every single time when called, then you can let him off leash. And you can start to test that as he gets a little bit older, going somewhere that's fenced in, somewhere you still have control. Uh, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't respond, I immediately go and get him and put him on the leash. He never gets to ignore me, never. Uh, so even if it's five o'clock in the morning, you let him out to go to the bathroom and then he thinks it's fun to run around and play, if you call him to come and he ignores you, you immediately march out there and go and get him. You cannot ever let him get away with ignoring that command. Um, if he ignored me or maybe I called him to come and he was like, ah, maybe not, I would immediately say no and I would go start walking towards him. I'm never gonna chase after him because then it comes it becomes a game. But I will march after him. And if I get like 90% of the way there and then the last 10% he runs up to me, I will reward that behavior. Even though it can be frustrating and you just walked all this way, but then he's like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I will reward that behavior. You cannot reprimand your dog for coming to you. Even as simple as that. Now, if I made it 100% of the way there, then I would tell him no and I'd clip on that leash. But he never gets away with ignoring this command. So one more time here where he's distracted. Willie, come. Good boy, okay, good boy. Just like that. So uh, with that, we're going to quickly show you him loading in and out of the car and then I'll show you his, uh, his tricks. So Willie, load. Good boy, good boy. Okay. So same thing applies for the load as it does like the crate. Once I send him in, he's not allowed to come out until released. So real quick, I just wanna show you two of the tricks that we've been working on. Uh, that's high five and roll over. Uh, you're gonna to have to continue with them just like the training. So first thing with high five, we've taught him that depending on what hand I put down is which paw he should put up. So I'll tell him, high five. Okay, good boy. And then I can switch hands, high five. Good boy. Which that one he kind of missed, so we'll just high five. Yeah. Good boy, okay. So as simple as that. But remember, if I don't ask him for a high five, like if I'm bringing a treat down, no, I'll correct him for bringing that paw up. He has to distinguish between that. That way we don't get that pawing motion all the time. The second one is roll over, so I'm gonna take him down. No. So you can see where he's wanting to do high five. I just scooted back, waited. 
So for rollover, you've got to get him to roll onto his hip first. So I'll bring this treatler, see how he just slunched over, and then I'll tilt his head, get him over, roll over. Okay, good boy. So work in progress. The goal is that you'll just be able to do kind of this motion and he'll just flop over. But while he's still lear learning, he needs that treatler. Sip. Yeah, you want some water now. Down. So once again, I get him to roll over, roll back onto that hip, and then we come over the top, nope, of his nose. Okay, good boy. So as simple as that. So I look forward to bringing him down and meeting you in person. Thanks.